Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for watching. So here we go. This video is basically going to be talking about twist rates, all right? And I'm going to say right off in the beginning, I am by no means an expert in this field. Um, I'm just going to explain it to you how it's been explained to me and how I best understand it, okay? We're going to try to keep it short and sweet and simple for y'all, but uh, I've been told I ramble, and I've said that in multiple videos, and I've said I wouldn't apologize for it, so here we go. I'll put up a picture. I don't know where it came from. It's just off the internet somewhere, so I hope it's not copyrighted. If it is, then I'm sorry, uh, but I can't find the copyright to it. So this is the picture right here. So basically, we got a black background and a bunch of different circles and a bunch of different numbers. And to people that understand, it's pretty self-explanatory. But to people who don't really know much about firearms, I'm going to try my best to explain it to you, okay? So my understanding is... Way back in the day, the original like AR-15s and stuff, they had a 1 in 12 inch twist, okay? They, they messed around with different variations and stuff, but they settled on a 1 in 12 for a while. What that means, and what all these numbers, 1 in 7, 1 in 8, 1 in 9, 1 in 12, what the world does that even mean, okay? Let me back up. That basically means that when the bullet is traveling down a barrel, here's a barrel right here. When a bullet is traveling down a barrel, okay, it doesn't go... It doesn't just slide out the barrel. It's not a muzzle loader or a smooth bore. There is rifling in here. And maybe you can see in here, you probably can't. No, there's no way you're going to see that. I'll try to take a picture for you of rifling. But basically what it is, it's grooves that are cut into the barrel. On the inside of the barrel, there's grooves that are cut that spiral. Okay? Imagine a football. Okay? This is, why they're, this is what they're for. Imagine a football. The football is the bullet, right? If you just take a football and you just throw it, it's like that. You just throw it. You don't spin it. You just throw it. It's going to go, but it's going to flip and tumble, and it's not going to go very far. If you, get, if you get the right hold on a football and you spin it, right, and it spirals, right, it's going to be more aerodynamic. It's going to stay in its trajectory a little bit longer. Um, it's just going to fly a lot smoother and a lot straighter, right? It's the basic same concept with a bullet. Okay, bullets are not round. Right? They're not they're not, not like I said, muzzle loaders, they're not musket balls. Okay. They're oblong. They're they're long. I don't have any right here with me. Um, but they're long. They're they're like a boat. People say boat tail. If you imagine the outline of a boat where it's bigger in the back and then it gets smaller in the front, that's how a bullet generally is shaped. Okay. And if you just take that and throw it, it's just gonna tumble and flip and it's not gonna not gonna do much. But if you give it a spin, right? Just like when you give a football a spin, when you throw it, it's going to rotate and stabilize, right? And it's going to travel farther and be more accurate. That's the idea. So back in the day, like I said, they started out, I believe, they started out with, with the 1 in 12. And for whatever reason, that's what they had. Um, and just like the picture explains, your, your circles are what encompasses the best, uh, the best group of bullet weights the range of bullet weights that, that that twist rate will accommodate. What do I mean by that? So your lighter bullets, okay, like your, your 40s, your 45s, 50s, and 55s, they have a slower twist rate. That 1 in 12 means that in, in 12 inches, and I kind of got ahead of myself again, in 12 inches, that bullet is going to rotate one time, okay? Which also means in the 1 in 7, that in 7 inches, the bullet is going to rotate one time, right? So... Does, I hope that makes sense, okay? So the, the first number is how many rotations per whatever your second number is, 7, 8, 9, 12 inches. That's what they are, okay? And there are different wild uh, uh, twist rates out there, but these are the main ones for their AR-15, okay? Um, so like I was saying earlier, your, your lighter bullets, they don't need as much of a twist rate, okay? They're lighter. They just they, they spin. They're fine, and that that's what they started out with, okay? Your... One in nines, okay, as they started to develop heavier bullets, it's going to allow you to shoot a little heavier, like a 62 grain bullet, okay? That's how this thing shows, okay? Your, 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 your standard uh, 55 grains is going to shoot that just fine. Your 62s, is, you know, it's going to shoot okay. And then your lighter stuff, it's also going to encompass those. It's going to be able to shoot them and stabilize them properly, okay? Um, as you get up into heavier bullets, Okay, your 77s, like your heaviest bullet, your 77s. Okay, yeah, I guess there are some 80s. I have a whole video out there on some guy making ridiculous heavy bullets that nearly blew my gun up. 
all right so you can only go so high and so heavy with the, the with these loads but the general in general your heaviest ones are like your 77 grains your one in eight twist is basically going to encompass the most uh, the, the the widest range that is that it will stabilize the widest range of, of, of loads of uh, all the way down to your 50s all the way up to your to your 77s so a one in eight twist is as close to a do all uh, twist rate as you could as you could want to get your one in sevens that's what a lot of people have nowadays okay it seems like and I wasn't all up in the know back when I was growing up but it seems like everything was one in seven okay and then one in eight or yeah one in eight came out and it was it was the bee's knees it's the best thing in the world and then now it seems like a lot of people are, are still sticking to the one in seven because in general the one in eight it's going to give you a wide range it's going to be able to stabilize most everything okay um but really once you get up there into your one in sevens that's that's pretty quick that's a pretty quick uh spin rate and in general, it shoots like it says, in, like it shows in the picture. It will stabilize your 55 grains up to your 77 grains. When you go buy bulk ammo, most of the time, your vast majority of the time, it's going to be 55 grain ammo. That's that's your stand. That's the standard. That that's what ammo. That's what 5.56223 ammo mostly is. 5, 5 is 55 grain ammo. So if your one in seven will will stabilize that properly and give you good accuracy, well then you also have the ability to shoot those those 77 grains if you wanted to you know shoot some some mark 262 stuff or my favorite the uh, the freedom ammunition um 556 77 grain stuff very good shooting stuff but it's a 77 grain bullet it's heavier you can use it to hunt you can use it to do that to target practice with and shoot further distances uh, but that you need that one in seven to stabilize it now here's the thing if you were and i have not done it personally i'd like to do it and just see um and I think I have some 40 grain loads that I might try this. But the, the theory behind this, the reason you don't want to be shooting light loads like these 40 grains, 45s, out of, say, a 1 and 7, is because when, that bullet is so light, okay? It's very small and thin, difficult to tear. That's another quote. Um, kudos to whoever figures that one out. But it's very light, okay? And so when you twist that thing really fast, if you could imagine... Imagine a, you can even go back to the football thing. If you have an inflatable football, okay, they're all inflatable. Why am I talking? One of them skinny, thin, little, uh, almost balloon, uh, thin footballs, those children's ones, okay, that you, that you blow up and play with in the pool or whatever. If you took that and somehow or other were, I don't know what RPMs you'd have to get up to or twist rate, but if you were to throw that thing and, and at, at a super high twist rate, if, if you can imagine a slow motion, it would rip apart because that fabric is not, it's not made to, to handle that kind of, that kind of, uh, what, centrifugal force? Maybe, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I could be wrong on that, on that, that term, but it, it's not made to handle that and it will rip apart. If it's spinning too fast, it will rip apart. Whereas your heavier, a, a real football, if you were to throw a real football, okay, you would be able to spin it a lot faster than that than that lighter uh, balloon kind of football, and it would hold together. Imagine also if you were if you could even take it up to the extreme and make a football out of lead. Okay, you could spin that thing wicked fast, like ridiculously fast, to the point to where the football itself would rip apart at the seams. I think it is centrifugal force where it was just, it's trying to rip apart because it's spinning so fast. It's just. It, it, it rips itself apart that lead would hold itself together the same theory the same thing in mind with these with these lighter loads so if you're planning on shooting varmint loads like 40 grains i think they make 42s that might be in 22 i don't know but the the lighter varmint stuff then you need a slower twist rate because if you shoot it too fast it's going to overstabilize and it's basically just going to rip apart in the air that's the idea anyway like i said i've never personally done it i've only read about it but that's the idea and then your heavier and more standard stuff, your 55s to your 70s, any the, the these one and eights and one and sevens, they're going to stabilize those. So that's probably way over explaining this. I probably lost a lot of y'all way back ago, but if you're still here, thank you. Um, that's the best the best explanation that I've ever seen, or the best picture. This just it just lays it out perfectly. I basically don't even need a, a video. I could just post this picture. And it answers the question. But for people that don't really understand, that's why. And you imagine what I was talking about with the footballs. Um, 
with the lighter ones, if they spin too fast, they're gonna, they're gonna shred, right? The heavier ones, they need to spin fast to stabilize. It's basic, what would it be, physics? I don't know, I'm not that smart. I'm not that smart. I hope that was helpful for y'all, I really do. Um, I hope this was short enough that I'm not rambling too much and awkward and long, but uh, I'm gonna post this thing up. It should be, what, Saturday the 14th is when this should post, I hope. Um, and I apologize, I missed this last Wednesday's video drop. I had a whole lot of stuff going on. I kind of warned y'all before that I'm, you know, I might miss a couple days um, of posting, and that's kind of what's happened. Is I missed a couple days. I got behind on some different things. I had house projects we got to deal with. Um, I wasn't able to get to the range. Hopefully this Saturday I'll be able to get to the range and get some more uh, footage and stuff and testing and all our fun little things. Got a bunch of cool stuff coming up. I have something amazingly. I really wish I could tell you, but I need to confirm 100% before I tell y'all and get y'all's hopes up. But there could be something else coming that y'all would really, really, really like. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that. All right. I don't want to get your hopes up. Y'all be good. You be safe. Thank you for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments below what other kind of videos y'all want to see. If there's anything specific that you want to see, I'm very open to suggestions um, as long as my budget allows. Uh, I'm very much open to that, but uh, yeah, y'all be good if you care. And uh, one more thing, one more thing, I keep not saying it, um, Gun Streamer. I'm going to leave a link down below. I'm posting my stuff to YouTube for now until we'll see what happens, um, and indefinitely until they like shut me down, if they do. Um, but Gun Streamer, check out Gun Streamer, all right? Big shout out to them. Big shout out to these other people. Um, see, I'm going to forget their name now, too. I think it was GunTube. Um with this whole outbreak of, of, of YouTube censorship and all this kind of stuff, there are a bunch of little, little uh, uh, media streaming uh, sites that basically popped up and they're kind of jiving to, to, to grow and, and to be a platform for people like me, people that appreciate the First Amendment, being able to speak their mind and not be censored. There's a bunch of these places that popped up, okay? And one of them was GunTube and they were having a lot of trouble and they saw uh, GunStreamer was actually heads and uh, what heads and tails of, uh, uh, ahead of, of of what they were doing, and they actually bowed out of the whole thing, and they're sending their business and everything over to Gun Streamer. So, kudos to GunTube for doing that. That is an American like that's some on. I'm trying to think of the word. That's like integrity. I don't know. Integrity is the word. That's. That is doing some. That is sacrificing your, your site, your company, whatever. I don't know how much money they're making, whatever. Probably not too much, but who knows? That's sacrificing their site for the betterment of people like me, people like you that want to that want to have a good media outsource instead of having a bunch of little ones that are struggling. They're trying to help compile it into some good ones that work. Kudos to them. So check out Gun Streamer. Make sure I'm saying that right. Yeah, I'll put the description or the the link down below. Gun Streamer. I'll be posting my videos there, as well as YouTube. And once uh, Full Thirty grants their, I they, whenever they say that I can post stuff, I'll post stuff over there. But right now, Gun Streamer is very easy to use and it's very intuitive, a lot like YouTube. Anyway, I'm gonna shut up. Y'all be good, be safe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.